this go is going to be a recap of what was just done. I've been stuck on this for a while. I wanted the card hovers to feel right and look right. So since we have all these 3D effects and animations for lerping, it became quite challenging to keep up with the positions. So I decided to figure out what the maximum number of cards at a time can be, and then just figure out how the hover zones work for each of those. And then maybe later I can go back and draw some kind of correlation and create maybe a linear function or other some kind of mathematical function to figure it out. So this I think this is 300x speed. I'm just trying to figure out those hover boundaries. Oh, there's a bit of a complexity around the angle of the cards. They're not perfectly up and down, but the screen space doesn't easily allow for angled uh, shapes to be drawn. I don't even know if you can do that, like you can draw a rect on the screen, but I'm not sure if you can angle it. And it doesn't look like it from the API that they provide. So yeah, there, there's some limits I'm working with here. Uh, we can't use the regular hover effects from Unit, uh, oh my gosh, from Unreal. And that's because the response times from it aren't fast enough. Like if you move erratically, then it can create some weird animation states. And so the only way I found to actually get proper control is to use our own tick and just monitor the mouse position and check where it's at and control the, the hover states. So that this works. It's very smooth. It's just really tedious to set up because I have to define the hover zones uh, myself using the screen space. And you know, maybe there's a better way. There probably is. Uh, I just have not been able to figure it out. And at this point, I've decided to just to just move on. And so this is that video, probably for future self, my future self, to let me know what I was thinking and what how we got here. So the, it is kind of trapped in this little section here with the show cards inside of a PP card hand. So we're able to at least consolidate this weird wacky logic where like in this example on screen right now, we can see that the offset's a little too strong. And so this is probably one of those times where it needs to be adjusted so that it, it feels just more accurate because the player's not gonna see those pink hover boxes. They're just gonna have their mouse and see the cards. And so those hover zones need to be somewhat correlated. It's probably the biggest issue with the one on the right side because that that hover one zone could be bigger. But if you were to approach it from the far right, it may not hover at all. So those are some kind of tweaks that we might need to make to this whole algorithm. Overall, this, uh, this does work. So I'll probably cut my audio at this point, let this finish playing out for historic reference. And then there's two more sections one section is just a quick rewrite of this debug screen draw, and then the last section is just a final test. Now at this last point, we ran into uh, an issue where we needed to extend the debug draw because I had it hard coded, like the width and the height of the boxes. And now that we're dynamically changing those hover zones, we need to be able to specify per each card, the specific hover and color and all of that stuff. So I created a struct to contain all of that information and made a new function on the HUD class, which was active in the scene. So we only use the HUD class for debug drawing on the screen because you can't get it any other way. So you can't get it through a 3D widget or you can't get it through the regular UI canvas stuff. You have to use a, a HUD class and that has access to draw directly on the screen. And so we have some helper methods and uh, data to just kind of keep track of like what's being drawn and when to draw it. And then in the show cards function in card hands, we have to, what is it called? We have to establish all of that when we're putting the cards on screen. So we have to grab all the screen positions, store them somewhere. And then when we send it to the debugger, it's able to 
faithfully reproduce those hover zones and we can easily see and manage um, all those positions. So that's what all this is. Before it was just storing the position, which was the top left corner of the rect, um, but that that's not working for us anymore. We have to actually take control over the entire hover region. Uh, and so this is to support single card hand holding um, or just holding two versus holding like nine or ten cards. So that did work out nicely. Then finally, at the end here, um, we're just going to do one last test where we turn on all the cards again, make sure that's still stable. And it's drawing accurately the hover regions, and we have all the behavior that we want. So that's that.